What's up guys and welcome. You are watching Fezzy Fitness. So let's start this video with the latest physique update of the conqueror, William Bonac. So we are now less than 3 weeks out of William's comeback show, his first show of the season since the Arnold Classic 2023. And by the way, this is gonna be William Bonac's first time in Spain and later in Portugal Pro as well. He has never competed at both these shows. Now, if we talk about his update right now, his conditioning looks absolutely supreme. And honestly, I have to say that is what we all expect from a guy like William Bonac. And matter of the fact is, he has been so consistent when it comes to conditioning. The man has always been on throughout his career. In fact, his last Mr. Olympia, which was the Olympia 2022, that was by far the worst look of his entire career. And those are actually William Bonac's own words. He himself was so disappointed and embarrassed by the look that he presented at that show that he did not even post a single picture or any video of that show on any of his social media. And one of the reasons his conditioning was so far off was the delay in timing in the men's open class. That show started like 4 hours late. But still, that wasn't a good look. Now his last competition which was the Arnold 2023. He was in a super conditioning at that show. But even then he was unable to crack top 6 which was a big blow to his reputation. And one of the reasons for his decline in his placings was because his waist got a lot wider in the last couple of years. He kinda lost his X-frame and his V-taper and that is why he dropped so down in his placings. Now, not taking anything away from William Bonac and his recent update and I think he really looks great but unless he looks equally good in the comparisons at the Emperor Classic Spain against guys like Michael Crystal and Barro Stabani, it is gonna be a difficult show for him. And as of right now, it is a little too early to predict his fate. So the biggest disadvantage for William Bonac here at this show is gonna be his narrow clavicles. And unless he is all round and 3D, he is gonna look really narrow standing next to a guy like Crystal and also Barros Tabani. And we have to keep in mind Andrea Presley is also doing that show. And he's also one of the widest guys out there. So do let me know what you guys think. Drop your predictions in the comments below. Will we see William Bonac on the Olympia stage this year? Next up, we have the physique update of one of the best to ever do it in the 212 division, Flex Lewis. So as of right now, he hasn't trained for 7 weeks straight and the man is still looking like that. And the reason for him not training is his tricep tier. Now, if we take a look at his recent update, I have to say there is no reasonable explanation on how can Flex still look bad than 99% of the population without even training. I guess there is a reason why these guys are the best in the world. So for the people who do not know, he tore his triceps 6 weeks ago in a way that no one actually expected. He was actually holding the door and someone kicked it I have to think pretty damn hard and that resulted in his tricep tear which is really ridiculous. So Flex in his prime used to lift monstrous amount of weights and as far as I remember he never had any serious injury throughout his prep that would actually hinder him from training for this long. So although Flex hasn't been training, he is eating just enough to maintain a decent body composition and that is why he is looking this good. So it is kinda too bad that this injury happened just a few weeks after he was training with Rafael Brandao and for the very first time since he officially retired, he was actually enjoying his training. He was back on a very solid plan and that is why he was looking really good. So wishing him a very speedy recovery. So anyone wondering how much weight does Stefan still needs to lose in order to make that weight cut off for classic physique, it is 11 more pounds. And that is plenty because he has started to look really flat in his recent updates. I just said that in his last update as well, that he is looking kind of flat and small now, especially in comparison to how he looked when he started this prep at the peak of his offseason. And I believe we have a mutual consensus on something here. Stefan will always have to lose quite a lot of muscle and a lot of fullness as well, regardless of who is coaching him, regardless of how smooth his prep goes. As long as he stays in classic physique division, he's always gonna have to suffer. He just carries too much muscle and a bet. He will look at his best a few days after the show, with all the water and all the food, when his muscles have come back to life. Now, with a world-class coach like Patrick Tour coaching him, he might be able to bring his physique back to life after Stefan is done making the weight, after the carb loading process. Plus, these guys start this prep quite early. It was actually a really long prep and the reason for that was to make that weight making process as smooth as it possibly can be. But the suffering at the end, that is just inevitable. So right now Stefan looks pretty close to the contest for the condition. There is literally zero fat to lose at this point. The Christmas tree is already in. You can see his hamstrings, his glutes, they are all striated and his chest has always been super striated. 
And even though I do think that he should switch to open bodybuilding for good, but still, I think he's gonna qualify for this upcoming Mr. Olympia, even in classic physique. Now, how high can he place at the biggest show in the world? That is the real question. Can he crack top 10? Do let me know what you guys think. New pictures and training videos of Ramondino got released today. And one word, damn. He is training extremely hard. I mean, pressing 80 kg dumbbells on the inclined press. That is more than 170 pounds on each side. That is monstrous strength. That is extremely impressive. Plus, I have to say the density that is already making a comeback. So Ramondino is looking to redeem himself at this year's Mr. Olympia. And I think we all have to appreciate this guy. Because even with such a small prep, that was just a 6 weeks prep for this year's Arnold. He's such a great athlete that he lost that show just by one point. And had he showed up at the prejudging the way he did for the finals, he would have won that show. That is how far ahead Ramondino actually is from all of the competition. It took the best of best Wizards to beat him. And that was actually the problem. That nobody including Robin thought that Wesley is gonna come out of nowhere and just shock the entire bodybuilding world. I mean, that was one of the biggest upsets in the recent times. So, Arnold Classic Ohio is in the history books now. Ramondino is gonna enter this year's Mr. Olympia as a two times runner up in the last two years. He is the guy who earned the respect of Chris Bumstead, the champion himself, and even Sebum himself admitted that the gap was getting closer and closer every single year, especially between him and Ramon after the Olympia last year. So Ramon is on a mission right now. He looks hungry and he looks more motivated than ever. Sometimes a loss can exactly be that thing that you needed all along. So maybe we are gonna witness an even better version of Ramon than what we saw at the Olympia 2023. But do let me know what you guys think. Which one of these guys, Wesley or Ramon, is gonna challenge the champ Chris Bumstead at the Olympia in October? The legs of Dorian Yates at the age of 62, they are gonna blow your minds away. And the craziest thing is that Dorian doesn't do any heavy lifts, especially in terms of the squatting movements, nor does he do any leg presses. So Dorian retired after 1997 Mr. Olympia, after winning his sixth consecutive Olympia title. He retired undefeated, so it has been over 25 years now, more than two and a half decades, and some gains are still there. And that is why he is considered one of the greatest of all time. So was Dorian the most hardcore training guy at that time? And even in the history of the sport, even his competition from the 90s would agree with that. The guy was absolutely nuts in the gym, but his style of training was exactly what broke him later. And eventually he had to step away. And by the way, that retirement even in 1997 wasn't planned. But his body was so beat up, up to a point, where he could not train as hard as he did throughout his career. But the man is still an inspiration for millions around the world. Those colorless black and white training videos. They are a huge source of motivation for a lot of people even to this day. So Flex Wheeler, the Sultan of Symmetry, he competed against a prime Ronnie Coleman and against a prime Dorian Yates as well. But he said that he was more intimidated by Dorian Yates. So 1993 was the year when Flex actually made his Olympia debut and arguably brought one of the greatest physiques to ever step on the bodybuilding stage. And 93 was the year when Dorian Yates had no injury whatsoever and that is why he was actually able to beat him. So hit the thumbs up button if you like the video and smash the subscribe button if you wanna come back for more. Thanks for watching.